Evangelion is a complex anime leaving many confused upon completion. People dig deep to find the answers and find long 4chan posts explaining the plot in detail, but I find that this is very hard to grasp for a beginner. So I have decided to create this easy to understand simple guide to walk you through the plot frame by frame. By the end of this video, you'll understand Evangelion like the back of your hand. The anime starts with a barren tone. You're immediately greeted by the protagonist, Shinji Ikari. Shinji stands for light, and Ikari stands for truck, which is a very important metaphor in the show. The dystopian Japanese city surrounds him, and the world is bleak, much like Shinji's demeanor. Soon after, Shinji shows us a postcard from his anime waifu on it, a purple-haired bartender from New York who studies biology at NYU on the side. She also works at NERV as a space intern. Now, NERV is Shinji's big break. To give a quick backstory, Shinji comes from a long line of emerald mine profiteers. Picture here is his dad and his mother who made a cool synth pop album in 2015. Shinji is quickly swept up into a world of hurt as giant robots force him into a peril of depression. This is where the show really gets going. Shinji wanting to get his big break and press his father attempts to pilot one of the polygon cybermechs and save the world from giant abstract creatures from the game Sonic Shuffle on the Sega Dreamcast. His father, however, is never impressed and doesn't even bear a grin towards his son. We soon find out that his father is in cahoots with the ghost of Jeffrey Epstein, who was killed by another character in the show, Hillary Rodham Clinton. They briefly debate over which Death Grips album is better, the original X military mixtape or the money store, and it ends with Shinji forced to take classes at Tokyo Senior High. This is where things take a more slice of life approach and we are thrown into a high school drama on par with the great Toradora. Shinji, however, struggles to make friends with classmates Diego and Little Samson, and soon enough Shinji is forced into an awkward love triangle with the two troubled characters as things get heated when Little Samson attempts to videotape a love scene for his film class. All while this is going down, his billionaire dad is constructing a new ruby red mecha fit for the German military. In response, the German government sends its finest infantry, a 13-year-old redhead. Shinji, unable to grasp the rules to Battleship, has a rough start with his new girlfriend and things don't really pick up again until Shinji meets Rem from ReZero in a spin-off Isekai arc. He gets along really well with this 27-year-old robot clone and admires how she hangs her socks above her bed like a fucking moron. Hijinks ensue as Shinji Ikaru is forced to live with Asuka in the same house as a stinky penguin and an alcoholic mom. Shinji tries beer for the first time but drinks it out of a coffee cup like an idiot. Misato then regales to Shinji the deep twist, which which is that his dad's new startup, Nerve, is actually a pyramid scheme set up by the CIA to destroy humanity in one big giant spectacle, dubbed the Big Tang. Shinji, being fucking 11 years old, cannot even grasp what is happening, and neither can the other main characters because for some reason Nerve hasn't trusted human survival to three mentally ill children who hate each other. Shinji, now confused more than ever, tries to escape child labor by taking a stroll with his Sony Walkman. Listening to Hall & Oates' hit song Maneater, he realizes that he really has no choice and heads back to the old stomping grounds to take down the fourth art angel, the Octahedron. Luckily, Shinji's new mecha has been constructed to include bulletproof glass and flamethrowers. While Shiz battles above, several underpaid interns man the battleship underground in order to defeat the evil 3D Diamond and save humanity for a few days. Day by day, Shinjar continues to defeat the Art Angels until December 20th, 2020, where he is greeted by his space god boyfriend, Kawaru. Kawaru comes in to save Shintaro from his deep mental plague. You see, all Hinjeyu wanted to do was come to Japan and start his entrepreneurial career as a watermelon salesman with his best friend Richard in hopes to impress his successful capitalist dad, but became unfortunately swept into beating up giant space shapes. Kawara represents Shinji's last breath of freedom, his last blink of happiness. He instills joy in Shinji Boy only to quickly take it away with the shocking reveal that Kawaru was actually also planning to start a rival watermelon business in Japan. To make matters worse, he leaves to another dimension to what is implied to be a more fertile land for watermelon to grow, which is clearly evident later as all of Shinji's beloved watermelon are destroyed and squashed to become the new great sea of the earth a project known by only the elite as the Boring Instrumentality Project. You see, all along, Shinji's father swept him into watermelon farming only to take it away from him and show him who's the real businessman. He purposefully planted spies. The redhead from Munich. Rem from ReZero. His soulmate. The biology major. The cyber trucks. It was all a facade. Shinji was not just Shinji. Shinji was actually XAEA12. His father? Elon Musk, his mother, Grimes, and this, well that's just a game theory.
I'm Normie Scum, and I consume trash on Netflix all day. I watch The Office starring CIA Jim, and I laugh when Michael Scott says that's what she said. What I've always found annoying, though, is the inability to access shows from other regions. For example, there was this new anime called The Great Pretender, and I couldn't watch it without a VPN in the US. Luckily, Surfshark has me covered. With their lightning-fast VPN service, I can switch to another location and ride free into the Netflix sea. Secure yourself with Surfshark, a VPN that makes browsing the web safer by encrypting your data and shielding you from targeted ads, trackers, malware, and phishing attempts. Surfshark is super fast and works on every device, and it's super easy to use and set up. The best part is that it's actually very affordable. With my promo code ASTRESIST, you're guaranteed an 85% discount with three months for absolutely free. If you don't like it, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee as well, so check it out. The link is in the description. Thanks.